The myth of the saint. The saint. Saint. Saint Lydas. And with the myth of the saint, we would be able to touch many associated myths like the myth of respect, respectability rather. The myth of godliness, and of course, love. When we use the word saint, we use it. obviously inevitably in the same frame of mind from the same center as we use many other words our language is the language of objects any and every word that we know refers to something something that can be thought of something that can be touched conceptualized seen felt heard something <coughs> that is within the domain of mental activity so the obvious result is that even when we use words like saint god truth freedom joy love they turn into objects due to the sheer fact of verbalization because you have put them into words you have willingly or unwillingly turned them into objects the same thing happens when we refer to the word saint the saint immediately becomes something material a person a person you can see a person who is born a person who will die a person who can be heard a person with a body so for us the saint is a person and if the saint is a person he ought to be a special person to be called by a special name called saint he must have special characteristics and how do we know those characteristics just as our language is material similarly the characteristics that we will accord to this special person called saint must be all very material characteristics what kind of characteristics do we associate with a saint remember that whatever you will now state will be necessarily something 
that can be registered by the mind that can be spoken of that can be conceptualized you want to know whether or not a person is fit to be called a saint how do you decide how do you decide i'm asking this to all of you because we do refer to a few people as saints how do you decide that somebody is a saint that maybe one of them is the physical attributes how he behavior the physical attributes the behavior and we will give simple and direct answers hmm i appreciate this one but can we go a little deeper into it how do you know that somebody is a saint mostly you don't even need to know mostly the ones we refer to as saints are the ones who have been in advance declared saints by somebody else by some authority so we don't even need to determine how far have we come we have said first of all that like all other words in our dictionary the word saint too becomes materialized and hence it starts referring to a person and when we said it starts referring to a person we said a special kind of person because the word saint is special and now we are saying that that special person has special characteristics and our friend here has said that they are all physical characteristics or at least some of them are physical characteristics what are those physical characteristics how do you identify a saint and don't let's give intellectual answers someone who is speaking the truth and how do you know the truth especially in tisha usually it happens the other way around usually you say the truth is that which a saint speaks we have no direct way of knowing the truth but we have a direct way of identifying a saint which is through his physical attributes so whatever the saint says must be the truth let us accept that do we have direct relationship with the truth if you have a direct relationship with the truth then you can use truth as a test then you can say that if that person is an expression of the truth then he deserves to be called a saint but had we had a direct relationship with the truth then why would we have called a person a saint what are these physical attributes to begin with how do you immediately point oh a saint and that does not require too much effort right that is happening with us continuously very frequently saffron clothes saffron clothes hmm and calm look on the face what kind of look can you show us that look complete calmness yeah, nice never huh? gets sad about anything never gets sad about anything he is so happy about being in the world a gentle <laughs> smile like of course a gentle smile flawless forehead flawless forehead not bright wrinkled eyes. at all hmm bright eyes bright eyes enjoying all the uh, attention of gentle people around <laughs> 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 With a composed with voice. With a composed voice, and com- completely, I just believe that whatever he is saying is the ultimate. <laughs> and yes, everybody is yes. Yes, we are fools here. Thirty-five, forty years of life, we just screwed up. If it was so easy <laughs> to figure out that this is what qualifies a man to look like a saint, then surely it is not only you who know that. even the fellow who is acting as a saint knows this very well which means it is very easy to act a saint sure. 
everybody knows what you can do to be called a saint and isn't it horrible that we have really no other reliable way of knowing whether or not a person is fit to be called a saint whether or not a saint is actually a person that will take up later on but assuming that saints are persons i want to explore whether we have a way a solid way a reliable way to figure out who is a saint i think there is uh, just one criterion to know that uh, when you are close to a saint uh, your mind becomes uh, solid so this is the way if you know that you are the saint is not in wearing in the presence of yeah you said in the presence of a saint your mind becomes silent how has the saint been present in front of you not been person always as a saint right sitting on the podium walking like that behaving like that now if that same person is wearing a regular civilian dress you see him in a pub and you see him in a pub or in a train compartment sitting next to you would you still feel the same peace and he is not declaring that he is a saint it's conditioning of the mind actually is your silence is this so called silence real conditioning of the mind it's a conditioning of the mind that when that saffron clothed man with the beard and that look comes in front of me what do i have to do i have to feel silent otherwise if there was something about the body then you would have felt silent even in your sleep you are sleeping and the same passes by and your dreams and the agitation contained in them should have been assuaged but it is only when in the waking state you are conscious that such a such persona is hovering around then the old conditioning tells you ah a saintly figure a representative of god i ought to feel nice about it i am asking you to visualize that fellow is in a grocery store not wearing any specific attire not acting simply not followed by his entourage and where the energy goes where does the energy go with that guy and he is he is just like an ordinary person there purchasing tea bags would you still feel a great silence on receiving his darshan we don't know it depends on our internal state how okay. can we know you cannot know because you think that you haven't been close to such persons in their regular civilian ways you see what happens is that you remember only those occasions when they have come in front of you in their specific attire when they don't come in front of you in their specific attire you don't even identify them not only do you not identify them also there is no question of any special experience or peace or silence who is a saint somebody who behaves like a saint hmm a saint is someone who behaves like a saint and that code of behavior is very well known if it's well known to you it's well known to all now i want to ask you and this following from a discussion i had in the morning found it relevant some sharing was jesus behaving like a saint was he wearing a specific attire that is particular to saints maybe he was was he later, later. Yes. but was jesus emulating somebody copying no, no, no. somebody was jesus copying another jesus he was a misfit in the society was he speaking from a podium or was he speaking perched on rocks and stones and any place that he would found was he even recognized as a saint no in his life in no It is happening today 
then the entire city of Jerusalem did not feel any energy. They ordered death for him. Where was the energy then? When the man himself was present, then the entire city said death to him. Where was the question of feeling that great silence and energy? Even one of his own disciples didn't feel that energy. Forget about the rest of the general population. He was betrayed by one of those who were very close to him. Not even a stranger. Judas, his disciple. There is the question of was Krishna dressing like another Krishna? No. Was Mahavir emulating somebody else's nakedness? Did any of them look like each other in their mannerisms, behavior, dressing, way of talking, speaking? Yes, but they follow him only if, first of all, he looks and acts like a saint. If what he stands for, if the entire message that his personality is radiating does not fit into the groove, the framework of what is accepted as saintliness, then nobody will follow him. But I am asking that does a Kabir look and act like a Bulle Shah? Does Amira check up how a Gargi used to dress up? <laughs> so the real ones, hmm? and we are still assuming that the saint is a person, and we are saying that the real saint was always fresh not only in his core but even in his expression the real one expresses himself in a way which is totally fresh original and that is why he meets resistance that is why it is difficult to accept him That is one clear characteristic of the real saint. He would be himself arriving for the first time. Which means that if somebody looks like a saint, that alone is sufficient reason to know that he is not a saint. I repeat this. The real saint would never look like a saint. In fact, he would look like a heretic. He would look like a loony. So he it would not, be. He will not have followers also. Uh, that is another matter. The real ones were always so original that they never standard at the end of any tradition. Which means that if somebody is claiming to belong to a tradition and acts and walks and speaks in ways that are easily detectable as saintly, then that alone is a good enough reason to discard him. Who will discard? We are talking about ourselves. Nothing else is more important than our own life. That is the subject matter of all these sessions. The life that we are living. It has never happened that two realized men looked and talked alike. They were all very unique flowerings. It has neither happened at any time nor is it possible to happen again. Why is it so Why, why, why do you say so? that somebody who looks like a saint cannot actually be 
it is so because you are unique it is so because you have not eaten the same food that he has eaten because you are not born out of the same father and mother that he was born this uniqueness is the set of the situations that have brought you up your whole evolutionary process when your whole evolutionary process is different from others it is obvious that the truth will be expressed through you in not the same way as others when your face is not the same as others when your language and accent is not the same as others when your height your habits your likes and dislikes are not the same as others then how can be your robe and your mala be the same as that of the neighborhood saint i would like to ask you about this we are talking about the physical aspect you you said that the saint is known yeah, only through physical that aspects is what you said. if i say the saint is in the same frame and he's actually a saint and we discard him because you said that you know somebody who is into that frame cannot be a saint but the divine being we are all divine being born from the same Divine life. We are from the same source. We are all different, but eventually we are going and talking for the ultimate truth, the ultimate truth of spirituality, which you are breaking today. We'll we'll come to that. If you open so many things at one time, they all will get muddled up. So so so, just I, I, walk along. <laughs> Everything will be touched. Everything will be opened, explored, and reconciled. I'm saying, has it ever happened? Does it ever happen? It can happen. How can you know? Help. Do you see it ever happening? <laughs> How do you know anything? <laughs> How do you know anything? <laughs> I think it's not very fair to to other people to say, ah, oh, you are looking like another saint, so you are not a saint. Don't you find it amusing that people are different in all ways possible? their hair are different their heights and weights are different but when it comes to donning saintliness everybody knows what kind of attire goes and not only do they know even the followers know yes right. don't you find it strange because maybe of that because all the the pers- personal patterns are, are gone away all that so all the personal patterns you have a pattern uh, gone away don't you think the dress itself is a pattern Ah, yes. Okay. So stop so, like that. Can I say something? Can I say something? Are we comparing people from you know different regions of the world and different times, like can, thousand years apart? You can comp- so they will you know look different, dress different. You can compare talk. anybody, Buddha and Mahavir. They belong right to the same time, same region, same century, and yet they were so different in their expression. You don't have to talk of people But being thousands of years apart. The same thing, no? that is what we say. Forget about seeing the same thing. We are right now talking about what constitutes saintliness in our eyes. We are talking about their persona, because the persona itself is unfortunately so important in the demarcation of saintliness. But when they were at that <laughs> time, they also came in that persona. Was Buddha's persona the same as the persona of Yagyal? Because here there is a comparison. How can there be similarity without comparison? If I am, a, wait, understand this. If I am wearing what he is wearing, 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 surely there has been an act of comparison already in place. I think aren't we being too uh, judgmental? Of course, we are being judgmental because it's an important thing. We are more talking about who is a saint. The question is who is a saint. Oh, there you go. Hold on. when you said are we not being judgmental yes. i gave a very brief reply yes we are being judgmental is that not right that is very much right who told you that being judgmental is a problem but we just stuck up there and we lose the basic <laughs> you won't if you allow us to move forward we won't be stuck <laughs> <laughs> we must remain a little more with this and let the absolute helplessness of our situation come to us we respect somebody we accord some status to somebody we even <coughs> live our life according to the way suggested by somebody and we have no sure way of knowing whether he is actually a saint 
do you see the terror contained in this you have put somebody on a podium you are worshiping him and you do not even know whether he is worth it you are allowing him to dominate your life your consciousness you are allowing him to mold your thoughts and you don't even know whether that ought to be the case you have no original criteria no yardstick of your own to know and that is inevitable because had we had that yardstick that i through which to know the real saint we could have used that same i to know the real me just as i do not know really about myself this middle chaotic self similarly i have no way of ascertaining whether the person in front of me is a saint or not and then i have no way of ascertaining anything then i use what you call as rules of thumb then you use what you call as general indicators but general indicators cannot be relied upon in such grave matters of life and death a saint by definition stands for godliness you are talking of the immense you are talking of that to which you accord the highest value how can you accord the highest value to something without being sure about it how can you say that somebody stands as a proxy for god that godliness radiates through somebody without being absolutely certain of it forget about being absolutely certain i again ask you would that heart know in the grocery store does it happen does it happen has it happened don't imagine answer as a fact has the saint give up all the markers that establish him as a saint and walk through the streets and then let us see don't you see that the ones who call themselves as saints present themselves to you only in very limited time windows predetermined by them you do not see them living eating walking like human beings you see them in the theater on the appointed stage in the time window prefixed by them it's a show that has been rehearsed well in advance you only get to see what has been decided in advance to be shown is that happening or not and must we not pay attention to this as the matter of greatest importance we find it important to check whether or not the vegetables that we are buying are all right we find it important to check that the simple medicine that we are buying is not fake then must it not be important to check that the so called person that you are following is real in matters involving 10 rupees we are so particular but in matters that involve our total life we act so very casual and cavalier is our life not worth even 10 rupees
let this question stay let this question keep echoing shorn of his persona shorn of his words and his vocabulary how would you know the person as a saint let this simply stay with you and when this question is with you you must also check whether you have actually used that as a test ever the mind is lazy finds it much more convenient <coughs> to follow the crowd why take unnecessary risks if something is being accepted as all right if somebody has been certified as real then why do i need to stick out my neck and verify on my own it's far easier to simply say that if a thousand people are accepting him the thousand people cannot be wrong far easier now this we are opening up the second part now this is the inevitable result of identifying sainthood with a person whenever you will call a person as a saint you will have to depend on external markers there is no other way because a person can only be seen touched heard felt <coughs> remembered a person is material a person is an entity within one's sensory zone so whenever you will associate saintliness or godliness with a person you will have to depend upon something sensory about that person's personality his way of talking a so called aura around his face a particular twinkle in the eyes a particular kind of beard obviously a particular kind of clothing or some other markers on the forehead or somewhere it's not a mistake it's an inevitability because there is no other way to know a person except by his looks how do you know a person how do you say that x is x and y is y by their looks so if you associate saintliness with a person then saintliness will have to necessarily be linked to looks if we are referring to the same as a representative of the beyond as somebody who brings news from a place that lies outside this sensory expanse then we will have to first of all desist from calling any person as a saint and that opens up tremendous possibility if no particular person is a saint if saintliness does not depend on physical and sensory markers then every person is possibly a saint 
because now the saintliness does not depend on person and personage at all who is a person a person is a restlessness truth trying hard to figure itself out person is the attempt to reach the truth and a person is the truth energizing that attempt the saint is that within you which makes you go to a saint i repeat the saint is that within you which makes you go to an external saint the saint is that within you which suggests to you that something outside of your own personality is very important it is just that when that suggestion comes we continue to look in our old ways there's something within us which tells that living as you are acting as you are believing as you are thinking as you are planning as you are you would remain restless so find something beyond yourself now the instruction is to find something beyond yourself and the mind interprets it in its own habitual way the mind says beyond myself means outside of me in space so it starts looking here and there in the world the saint is one's own essence you can either have faith in it or show tremendous disrespect to it by continuing to look outwards the saint is not a particular person when you are living by your core by your center you are the same and when you are wandering lost you are back to what you call as normal the person there is really no need to vest authority in any institution person book or entity outside of yourself because fundamentally nothing outside of you any way exists allow yourself to be the same and you are home continue to believe that you are misled and you need to go to an external entity and you would be holding on to the same belief you are saying i am misled i am incapable i need to hear something from the other one what is your identity statement at this moment what are you believing yourself to be you are believing yourself 
to be the lost one. When the fundamental assumption itself is flawed, how can the outcome be right? You are starting from a point which is fictitious. You are saying, I do not know, so I need to go to someone who knows. <coughs> the more you go to someone who appears to know, the more you are establishing that you do not know. By establishing more and more that you do not know, will you get to know? I repeat the question. Every time you are going to someone who you believe knows, you are going to him in the assumption that you do not know. And we are not talking of knowledge about the world. We are talking of self-knowledge. We are talking about knowing our own intimate matters. So you sit in front of that so-called saint with the assumption that you do not know and he knows. The more you sit there, the more you are reinforcing this assumption and turning it into a virtual fact for yourself. Is that helping you? Is that helping you? Is there anybody here who really does not know? I am asking you, is there anybody here who really does not know? And if you really do not know, how will you then suddenly come to know just through my words? <coughs> we are able to communicate right now because you already know. You may not acknowledge it. We have been taught a certain sense of incompleteness and inferiority. And due to that, we find it tremendously difficult to acknowledge our own immensity, our own understanding. But don't we really know? How is it possible that certain words come to you and you are able to resonate so easily with them? Is life not presenting reminders to you every moment? Yes, but sometimes it's nice to have a seed planted. Sometimes it's nice. You are the seed. You are the seed, you are the tree, you are the flowering, everything. You're, you're right. If you are deeply believing that you have forgotten, you probably need some kind of a shock or a reminder or a gentle touch. But I am asking you, is not life already offering enough of them? If you behave, if you start with the premise that you don't have eyes, will you end up having eyes? In the world of reality, the beginning is the end. If you start from point X, you cannot reach point Y. In the matters that really matter, in the domain of spirituality, the first is the last. <coughs> you do not begin rightly, you do not end rightly. You begin by saying, oh, I am a small one, a feeble one, how do I know? Then you will stay a small and feeble one. Knowing oneself, understanding life is not the same as acquiring knowledge. When you acquire knowledge, then it is a thing of memory. Then you begin from a point of not having knowledge and you end at a point of having acquired knowledge. But knowing oneself is not about gathering knowledge. It is a thing about observation. And life is continuously in front of you to observe. How is it possible, I want to ask you, that you do not know? And please let this question come very, very closely to you. This is a thought, right? This is a particular assumption. It is a belief that I do not know. I need external help. I need reminders. I need a helping hand. From where does this thought, from where did this belief come to you? 
you are not born with this belief from where did this belief come to you that you will not be able to know unless that divine authority comes and blesses you who told you this the same authority that same authority don't you see the foolish conspiracy don't you see that they have a vested interest in telling you that unless you go to them you will not be able to know from where did the first upanishad come how did he know he had no teacher from where does the one know who is not in contact with books or society or physical teachers how does the river know how to flow how do the birds know how do the seasons know they all know how do they know how is it possible that only we do not know everything in the universe is at its proper place is not suffering from a complex of not knowing how is it possible that man is wandering around in the grief that he does not know this is a belief that has been implanted in our minds and you must figure out by whom and how because that belief has not been implanted in one go in one instance it is continuously being reinforced we are continuously being told that enlightenment is something to be attained that it lies out there somewhere distant in the future we are continuously being told that god is somewhere up there and we find it easy to believe in all that stuff because that relieves us of our own responsibility to be our own master slavery is very comfortable in some sense it's something of security something of safety you don't have to live by your own awareness you can now walk blindfold you can allow somebody else to determine the course of your life and you can console yourself that you must be doing the right thing because everybody else is doing it the things that a scripture talks of are those material things are they things of experience the scripture says god said let there be light and there was light now is this something that you have ever seen yet the moment you read it it resonates the moment you read it you know that there is something here how is it possible for that to resonate with you if you do not already know that it is true look at all the strange and weird things that an ashtavakra says that an upanishad says that a ribhu says that a kabir says insane illogical and yet you know what they are saying you smile in fact it's a delight it's a delight because your center and kabir's center is one that is why it is possible to immediately relate with kabir immediately and you will never understand kabir if you do not already understand kabir which means that if you are not already kabir if you are not already kabir you cannot understand a kabir which means that you cannot understand words of godliness if you don't already have godliness within you and you understand and that is a proof 
of who you are. Life accepts no deviations from its smooth flow when you act in stupid ways then what you get is suffering suffering is a reminder from life you are asking for reminders any moment of suffering anything that causes you grief is a sure shot reminder it is telling you that your ways are misplaced do you need a bigger reminder all the agitation all the ambitiousness all the stress all the need to achieve something all that is a reminder that there is something not quite proper about the way you are living and if you listen to those reminders if you don't suppress them if you are not insistent upon deceiving yourself if you are not insistent that you will get the answers from some guru then immediately you will get the answers from yourself because life does not accept deviations <laughs> you get hurt life offers suffering you fall down you stumble but we are so obstinate that we get up we get up and we pretend that nothing has happened and we walk on we just brush off our clothes ensure that nobody has seen us falling <laughs> and keep walking as if nothing has happened now here was a message here was a strong reminder you are present in a so called satsang and you are feeling drowsy life is telling you something do not listen so much to the person listen to your own drowsiness <laughs> your drowsiness is the message of life you have become habituated to something in moments that matter you are unable to immediately decide on your own this confusion this inner conflict is a message from life you are searching for love life appears so dry it's a message from life you find that you are shackled yet you are do able to do nothing to break away from the enslavement that's a message from life and life takes no time to deliver the message all the feedback from life is real time instantaneous then and there you step wrongly you fall the reminder has come now would you heed the reminder would you be humble enough to pay attention to what life is saying or would you keep saying that okay tomorrow i'll ask about this to the guru and the guru will then say in his grave voice that you know yesterday you fell down because your karmic quotient has reached the saturation level and by falling down the snake when your backbone has been activated but we love consolations there are very few of us who would rather act courageously and confront the facts when they present themselves to us and they are presenting themselves to us at every moment all the time what is it that you do not know i want to ask you don't you know what is your relationship with your wife don't you know what you think about your kids don't you know how you keep feeling in your guts 
don't you know how your job makes you feel and that is life what else is life don't you know why you want to buy a new car don't you know why that person puts you off don't you know what you find sexy now what is it that you really do not know some mumbo jumbo parmatman what will you do with parmatman eat bake fry rinse wear use as toilet paper this is life and nothing else and what is life is presenting itself without fail without cessation without intermission i am again asking you please tell me how are you incomplete convince me that you do not know i do not see how you are incomplete i do not see how you are in such desperate need of guidance that you need to identify a person wearing a certain robe and standing and showering truth upon you you do not need that person the vicious fact is that person needs you will you let this come to you will you let this statement be clear to you <coughs> you do not need that person you do not need that guru that guru needs you to showcase his followership don't you see the damn trap and why is freedom so difficult to accept yes isn't it strange that if i convince you that you are small petty and you need a helping hand you will accept it so easily but if i convince you that you are free strong beautiful you resist i have always found it more difficult to convince people of their beauty than to convince them of their ugliness and if i run a beauty parlor i would surely want to convince people of their ugliness do you get this if i run a beauty salon then it is very important to me to convince you that there is something wrong about you so you should come to me and if you have been convinced since childhood if you have been conditioned by education family society church media gurus then you will start taking your ugliness as a fact your importance as a fact you are not important you are not ugly you are most wonderful just as you are the only thing ugly about you is that you do not accept your beauty you suppress it and that is so ugly so you are the most beautiful one and at the same time the ugliest one as well because you do not allow this beauty to radiate there can be no worse crime then to label your beauty as ugliness there is no sight worse than seeing a man follow another man man must follow only truth not another man the head must surely bow down and surrender but only in front of the truth not in front of some rogue wielding actor and if you are bowing down to a man then remember that you are not bowing down to god and that is sacrilege you will not be pardoned for that just look at this that is already present happening direct obvious 
and that is all you need no further guidance nothing in existence seeks guidance of any kind how is it possible that you do nothing in existence insists upon wearing makeup how is it possible that you do only you have been convinced that you are ugly only you have been convinced that you are feeble weak only you have been convinced that you need to reach some heaven <laughs> probably everything and everybody else is already in heaven man is the only one who is continuously trying to move to a heaven and hence he finds himself in hell all the time <laughs> don't you see that the so called professional saints have a great role in creating this hell for us Don't you see that? 